Happy anniversary, Breakfast in Beauclair. This has been such a great place to learn more from the Hansa community about their insights into The Witcher and not just talk about The Witcher, but also build personal relationships with the Hansa itself. I talk to them almost every day. I've joined a D&D &D group. We wouldn't have otherwise met had it not been for the Hansa. The Hansa and the podcast itself has been a really safe, cozy place to just be myself and engage with other Witcher fans. Thank you, Breakfast in Beauclair, and happy five years. Here's to another five more. Hey guys, welcome to Breakfast in Beauclair. My name is Alyssa, and today I'm joined by two special friends of the podcast for a very special occasion. Please welcome Anita Sarla and Carolina Krupetska. Yeah. I did it! Yeah, I did it. <laughs> Congratulations. Hello, everyone. Hi, we, guys. Yeah, it's really a special occasion, so it's a real treat for us to have you here in Poland in my flat. Like, I, I can't believe it. I, <laughs> can't believe. <laughs> I can't believe it. We met in person because, you know, that was a, like a dream come true for us. And yeah. we're really happy to have you here. Yes, and now we're all sitting around your dinner table, all together in Poznan. It was very funny because we've spoken around the last few days that seeing each other in person feels very natural. But for me, seeing our selfies and seeing us all in the same photo yeah. <laughs> feels very surreal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like we didn't even like dreamt of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now it's come true. Um, yeah, but we're here. We're celebrating the fifth anniversary of Breakfast in Eau Claire today, uh, Thursday, August 15th, 2024. Uh, five years ago, I put out the very first episode of the podcast in 2019. And um, yeah, it's been quite an incredible journey. Uh, thank you to Michelle Morley from, from the US, um, who also you heard in the cold open uh, for her anniversary wishes as well. Um, and yeah, so Carolina and Anita have a very special podcast today because they're going to be hosting. Yes, <laughs> yeah. that's a re reverse situation. Yes. <laughs> and I'll be the guest. So yeah, take it away. Guys. Okay, so... Well, the first question will be the obvious one. <laughs> what was the reason behind starting the podcast? Ah, yeah. So a lot of you uh, have heard my friend Mike Schubert, who hosts and produces uh, the newest Olympian, Potterless. And many years ago, I had already read the Witcher series. Um, after I played a bit of The Witcher 3, I saw my partner at the time uh, play it, got really interested and saw what he was doing for the Harry Potter community um, and later for the Percy Jackson community. And I was like, ooh, when Netflix uh, announced that they were going to make a TV show about The Witcher, I was like, maybe I can make a podcast community similar to that for The Witcher. Um, and yeah, and then that's exactly what I did. Well, no, that's not true. I tried. I failed spectacularly. <laughs> ended up with Good Morin, which was like the side project. And then a year later, after I made friends with you guys, after I made friends with Lars and Charlotte, mm. um, then I had the community to make the podcast. Yes. Yeah. And we joined the eighth uh, yeah, episode. Like some, some yeah, episodes. Bounds, bounds of Reason. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Long yeah. time ago, like I couldn't even like, you know, comprehend that. It was such a long time we've yeah. met so <laughs> since we've met. So okay, so the second question. Yeah, the second question also very important, I think. Uh what was your first contact with the Witcher topic? As a gamer, I suppose. Um Ooh. when I first yeah, I was first introduced to The Witcher through The Witcher 3, C D oh. Project Red oh. The Witcher 3, yeah. Um so that was the first time I experienced it and it's it's quite silly because like five, six, seven years later, I want to go back and play it again now that I've read all the books. Yeah. <laughs> I know the lore now because uh, at the time I was kind of going through the story mm -hmm. just as it was. Um, but now maybe I'd make different decisions, like lore accurate decisions. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but then you focus more on books, right? Uh, yes. During the yeah. podcast. So, so maybe you can also have like more gamer focused mm. uh, content <laughs> like in the future yeah my partner got me a ps or he got us i should say a ps5 um and a copy of the witcher 3 i haven't played mm -hmm. it yet but maybe i'll stream it one day okay <laughs> 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 new. we're looking forward yeah. to it okay so since it's been like five years like for sure you have some favorite moments from producing this podcast and yeah. any favorite episodes, like any favorite moments, puns even. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's so many good 
like good memories producing this podcast. Um, there's like, of course, the big ones, you know, like having Peter Kenny and Doug Cockle. Oh, on yeah. The yeah, show. yeah. Like they had never met before. And to like not only introduce them, but to yeah. really interview them about their craft um, was a just a treat. To, yeah, to we were so to happy that. to see that that they joined your podcast. Like, yeah. oh my God. Yeah, that was a big Van Gogh moment. It was very cool to see them improv, which was amazing. Um, and then obviously getting to do some of those collaborations with Netflix is very cool. Um, having the show come to my city and all of that. Um, when it comes to actual episodes, there are all these little moments that will stick out. Um, different guests meeting mm -hmm. that will become friends later. That's always something mm -hmm. that feels so special. Um, like Alicia and Sarah or Charlie and Jess and, you know, and Robin Mitch. There are these pairings now yeah. and they first met on the podcast, <laughs> which feels really special. Um, connecting people yes. Alice. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think about my values as a person and like community building is such a big one mm -hmm. so a lot of those I moments agree. yeah yeah a lot of the moments that are really special to me are about community building great um for me your pod podcast is just perfect but maybe we will discuss a little bit behind the scenes so the next <laughs> question is like what was the most challenging part uh, in making the podcast it was Anything particular that, uh, for example, hitting your nerve, you didn't like, you must change, <laughs> yeah. anything like. Because, you know, yeah. we, only, we, we only see the outcome, right? Yeah. We see like these marvelous artworks that you have, yeah. like all these ident color identification, which I really love mm, yeah. because it's so coherent. Mm -hmm. And I really love your editing skills and your it's like perfect. voice, which is really calm. And it's really, really nice to hear it. Yeah. yeah, but we don't see really the behind the scenes. Maybe we're just like, you know, oh my God. Oh, so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you as a content yeah. creator, we know that yeah, we what know. you see like online is totally different from Pro uh, from the, the process, process yeah. of yeah. creating. So, so that's why we're uh, something. Yeah, we're very really curious yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I feel like it very much is like you know they say about like a swan or a duck, very calm mm -hmm. above the water, but paddling like hell oh, <laughs> okay. the water. So I think like uh, some of the challenging parts of producing the podcast was really like how does one do it? Like, how do you uh -huh. make something good? And I think the same for you guys. Um, you figure things out as you go along. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And so there's a lot of trial and error. Um, I think my approach to podcasting and editing has gotten a lot more relaxed over the years and or I've gotten a lot more lazy. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's, um, I, I mean, basically working full-time jobs and then mm -hmm. the podcast was another full-time job. Yep. I spent, you know, a lot of my mid to late twenties just like not sleeping because I was like, yeah, we know, we know this feeling <laughs> like connecting, like, you know, work time with some hobby time yeah. and something after hours. Yeah. We're all too old for that now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't, <laughs> like probably <laughs> I can't pull all nighters and go to work anymore. Um, yeah. So I think that was the challenging part mm -hmm. is finding, finding the right way to make it sustainable for me mm -hmm. and to make sure that, that I'm still, of course, producing something that feels like it's a high standard and mm -hmm. high craft. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But you really did it. Like, oh, it's a really high quality. Yay. Yeah. Congrats to Alyssa. <laughs> Everyone now, right? Congrats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, did you like think that it would ever grow so big when you started like and so across so many countries like yeah. international? We know that it's called like global witcher podcast. Yeah. But did you ever like, oh, I want it to be like really international? Oh my god, no! Like I, I mean the tagline like Breakfast in mm -hmm. Eau Claire, Global Witcher podcast. That was kind of aspirational at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I made it. Um, the reason why I titled it that was because. I lined up guests for the first season who were all, um, I think, either answered a survey or who were followers of Good Morin mm -hmm. on Instagram. And then you guys, of course, Lars, mm -hmm. Charlotte. Um, I'm pretty sure the first season or two seasons only had people from the U.S. and Germany. Okay. <laughs> okay. But, and, but I still called it a global podcast um, because and then I, I think it really became that like mm -hmm. it. I'm very fortunate and very lucky that it attracted people yeah. all over the world. And I think it makes uh, our conversations and the community as a whole, you know, a lot more rich and more diverse. And it means our friendships are very fun and very funny and interesting. And as well as like the things that people glean from, mm -hmm. glean from mm -hmm. the books in the show. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of like 
international and also the cultural differences. Like, did you notice any like particular differences in perceiving the Witcher universe, like among mm-hmm. international members of Hansa? Because I mean, if there are any like significant cultural factors that affect yeah. the perception of of it of this oh, fantasy oh my world, goodness. yeah, I know it's I know it's tricky, but we are really uh, curious about that because we were poles. Like right. we grew <laughs> up like with the, the Witcher. Witcher. Like yeah. we we uh, read it in our like childhood, even if it's. More, more like a little mature books. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Little mature books but and still it's much easier for us to imagine anything when we are yeah from because the it's of connected somehow with our mm, culture so yes. that's why we're really curious if you notice like any differences yeah absolutely um it's interesting for me reading it as an american that the books as, as you've said on previous episodes of the podcast they're like uniquely pan-european because mm-hmm. Sikowski has gone through yeah. and he's picked fairy yep. tales from this region like from germany and he's yep. obviously brought in like uh smokovalski <laughs> <laughs> yeah. from the polish legends which and we saw together in krakow a few days yeah. ago <laughs> wild so much smaller than i thought it was going to be yeah <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a dragon lizard Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it wasn't on, uh, not only your impression, like Charlie from Hansa also had <laughs> his impression. So, yeah. It, yeah, we were whispering oh, to each other. Dragon. Was well. Dra- Dragon was cheating. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think what what's fascinating is that everybody has a different interpretation. And maybe it is because of like knowledge, maybe it's because mm-hmm. of the translations from different mm-hmm. countries. But I have learned so much from having guests like you and other people on, um, for example, uh, there's there's a certain level of cultural knowledge that I just don't have, especially mm-hmm. about like Polish mm-hmm. traditions or mm-hmm. Eastern European traditions. So like sayings like where the devil says good night, yeah. oh, yeah. being, being like one. a middle of the nowhere yeah. place. Mm-hmm. But Which like, we, I, I believe yeah. we explained it explain, right yeah. during, yeah. during our podcast. Yeah, I think Oleg, yeah. Oleg uh, explained it. And like it, I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get that on a read. Mm-hmm. So yeah. having that insight into different cultures and, you know, even to have other people from other uh, cultures and, you know, regions be like, oh, well, this is like a monster that's in South America, mm-hmm. like oh. a Bruja or a Bruxa, um, and see how much, you know, how much depth there is to the lore. It's more than I would personally <laughs> research, and I it's so, I'm so lucky that there are people and guests on the show that do research it and are passionate about yeah. this. You know, like you, Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Carolina has the master on floor. <laughs> My obsessions. Yep, <laughs> it's a good obsession. Mm-hmm. Yep, and I think we uh, have two. this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, what you learned during the whole process and your path in making the podcast? Wow. Um, I mean, there's, I've learned so much over the last five years. Um, yes, about podcast making and production. I was fortunate that Breakfast in Beauclair, I was able to figure things out for myself and like grow mm-hmm. the product, the scale of production, you know, just for myself and my, like under my drying rack and blanket for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. And then now I have like an in-home studio. Uh, so all of my equipment has been upgraded, which is great. I've learned more about audio and video editing over the years enough that I was able to make an entirely new podcast, you know, mm-hmm. based on that, yeah. which has now since won uh, the Atlanta French festival. So really, oh, really cool, cool to like yeah. have all of this kind of map to peculiar radio. Um, and then, yeah, so much more about like culture and community mm-hmm. building that I wouldn't have experienced otherwise. So many travels now that I've done yeah. <laughs> thanks to it. Um, and yeah, there's there's so much that I've learned and so much that, I, that I've been able to appreciate from my experience on the show. And I'm so lucky to have like done this and met you all. And yeah. yeah. It's, it like, feels very nice. Yeah. It started so small enough. So now it's big. so big. Yeah. Yeah. Just an idea, just a spark of an idea. And yeah. here we are. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if I wasn't persistent that first year of being like, oh, man, I'm going to find a way to do this. And I'm going to find a way to do this. And yeah. Persistence always bears back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So... Like any plans for the future, like any wishes for the podcast, let's mm. say, well, what you want to achieve. Yes. Like, you know, it's been like five, five years, but still the podcast is going like, yeah. forward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least my plans for the podcast will definitely cover the last three of Sikowski's novels. Uh, mm-hmm. 
So Baptist and Fire, Tower of Swallow, Lady of the Lake. I'm still, jury's out, still on Season of Storms. So I'll get around to <laughs> okay, covering okay. that, but um, we'll see. And then I'll finish out you know, the Netflix series. There's only two more seasons And the new left. book is coming. There's oh, new content. The new book. Yeah. It's, of course, yeah. Kiri's writing a new book. Oh, dear God. When is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably in like uh, the, it be at the, the end of this year. The end of this year. Sure. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, more content. So, no, I'm chained forever. <laughs> yeah, but I'll definitely uh, do do that in the podcast. Um, may or may not stream The Witcher 3, as I said. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't opened it yet because I feel a slight obligation to be like, maybe we just play this together on the internet. <laughs> yeah. So, we'll see. And then, you know, I'm obviously going to want to do more Hans meetups and, mm, and yeah. see people. Maybe we've done the last two in Europe, so maybe we're due for like mm-hmm. an America's one. Um, in regards to the Netflix show, I'm still holding out hope that, you know, the mm-hmm. cast is able to come on, um, that I'm able to do press junkets for either seasons four or five, mm-hmm. which would be really cool uh, to be able to interview uh, the cast members about their experience on the show. Um, I can't think of the same thing else. Uh I would like to cheer you guys on for future cookbooks. And, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I, I just want to continue to see this kind of community grow and yeah. develop. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's that's all my hopes for the yeah. future. Yeah. Okay. And any words that you want to say to all the Hansa from you as a host yeah. right Aww. now after all these five years? <laughs> yeah, I mean... Thank you guys for being a part of this community, for supporting, you know, myself and the podcast, uh, for creators like Anita and Carolina, um, who are, you know, podcast adjacent. Very lucky to have been able to work with you and to have met all of you on the show. Thank you for listening. Um, And I'm so grateful that the values of this book spoke to you. And that you were so interested in finding more people who shared your nerddom and it brought you here <laughs> to me <laughs> and to Breakfast in Beauclair. Um, so, yeah. So thank you so much for following along and yeah, looking forward to hopefully lots more to come. Yes, yeah. exactly. So. Like, again, thank you. We're so grateful for you, Alyssa. We're so lucky to meet you, to meet all of the people. Yes, and, the and Hansa. create together memories. And create yeah. together, like, great memories just because of The Witcher. Yes, <laughs> yes. Thank you, Sakovsky. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So thank you all, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. and see you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you guys so much for joining us for this episode of Breakfast in Claire, And we will see you in December for season seven. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Covering... Uh, Andrew Sikovsky's Baptism of Fire. Bye. Bye. Bye.